All right, if you're using Google Sheets and you have a table of data like this as a column with the dates in it, but what we want to do is summarize this by quarter. All right, so the first thing that we'll do, we're going to start out with a more standard examples. And what I mean by that is using functions you've probably encountered before, or at least functions that work in a similar way to them. So we want to define the range first. So we want to find the start of the date range. So we'll use the min function to find the smallest value and we will select this range of dates. Close out the parentheses and hit enter. We'll stop this autofill. And this is telling us our date range starts on January 5th, 2021. And we want to find out when it ends, so we'll say max to find the maximum value. Highlight them again. And the end of our date range is February 23rd, 2022. Yes, here on Sheets Help, we work into the future. That's how good we are, right? And now that you define the start and the end, next we're going to make a table listing the quarter start and end dates. So I'll add the word quarter in here. All right, and as we go through this, what we're doing, we're just reconstructing this template that you can download from sheetshelp.com. The link will be in the description on your website, and you can make a copy of this entire sheet to have for yourself. All right, so since these functions don't know when quarters start and stop, we're going to make a table here that tells it, and I've already typed it out. I will copy and paste it, but you would have to construct this yourself if you're using this first method. In our second and third examples, you won't have to do this. Uh, you'll see that those are going to be easier. But we're telling the spreadsheet, hey, 2021 first quarter starts January 1st, ends March 31st. So each of these have a three month span between them. I don't necessarily know at this point if every quarter has data in it, because this is a small table, that it was easier to understand if we kept it small. But I'm assuming it does. It's not going to hurt anything. You'll see what happens. So I defined all five quarters that span these two dates, the start and the end date. And then next, what you want to do, since you have those defined, let's just summarize the data. We're going to use three different functions. So we will list the quarters again down on the left. And I will we'll scroll down, come to the right a little bit. And this is where the magic happens, right? Well, actually, let me scroll back up so we can reference that table. We want to sum the amounts. So if we go back and we look at the source table, we have uh, only one column with real numerical data in it. The dates are numerical as well, but what we want to work with and summarize is this column that I just called amount. And if you want to do a sum in it, I'll grab that formula. These formulas are already made. They're a little bit tricky. So work them out first and then show them to you. The formula that we're going to use is called sum ifs. Let me tighten up the data range a little bit here. I had made it when I was trying to do the example with more data, but I made it a little bit smaller on purpose. Okay, so the sum ifs formula, what it's doing if you say it out loud without the S, it sums numbers if a certain condition is met. So the range that it was going to sum is the first argument, and that's D2 to D12. So if you see the bottom of it being highlighted here, we'll scroll up, that's our amounts. And we're going to sum that if the dates, so that's column A, fall within this range. Okay, so I would just copy and paste this formula. I say greater than or equal to, and this is a start date, greater than or equal to, and then this is the end date. You can tell which is which. This is blue, and if you come up to our table, you'll see the dotted blue outline, and this is... It's probably a name for this color. We'll call it, we'll call it chartreuse. I'm not sure if that's what it is. And you see that outline here. So we're saying sum the amounts if they're within this date range. Hit enter, and it gives you a 25. 
and Google Sheets wants to autofill this. We're actually going to let it, and that autofill is going to work, and we'll talk about why. So when I go into the next cell, this is actually the one that has no data in it, so, but we can still look at it. So when I double click on this, what I wanted to show you was the ranges that it's working with in the data table haven't moved. So normally when you copy and paste or you drag a formula down, everything will, else will shift down one, but that's what we use these dollar signs for. So these are fixed cell references. When you copy and paste them or move them around, they don't move. I fix the column, which actually wasn't necessary, but I usually fix them both if I'm going to fix one. And I fix the row, so that two stays a two. Now what we didn't fix was the H and the I because we wanted to look at quarter two this time. Right, so if you go down to the third one, it's looking at quarter three. So those are shifting because there's no dollar signs before them. So I'll also link in the description to more information on cell references, but these are fixed cell references and these are relative cell references. And this is a great example of how you can use them with real world data to enable you to copy and paste formulas and have them behave the way that you want. All right, and let's just fix the font. We'll grab this style and we will paint that format over here. That looks a little bit better. And now we want to do the exact same thing with average. And it's a little bit redundant to have all three of these examples available, but the point is that you don't have to change that much to do other functions. So I'll paste the average in here. We'll take a look at it. And it again has that old uh, data range, so we can tighten that up. It's actually not hurting anything because below it it's blank and the average function ignores blank cells but I think I just prefer it to actually match the range. But you'll look, it's defining the range that it's going to average and then the criteria. And again, we're saying between these two dates. So it's a very similar formula. Formula, hit enter, fill it down. And one different thing that happens is, one, you're dividing and not adding, so you're getting decimal points. We'll just highlight all of these. We'll click on decrease decimal places Maybe you want to see them. You can leave them if you want, but I think it's a little bit cleaner not to have them. Gave me this font style again. I'll fix that. Refix decimal places. And the other thing that's happening is you're getting an error. So when I went back and looked at the data after I made this, I realized there was no data in the second quarter of 2021. All right, so that's fine with the sum. It just doesn't sum anything, and it says, look, it added up to zero. But when you do average, it's trying to divide by zero. So that's actually right in that it is trying to divide by zero. Uh, you could just delete that, or you can just leave it. It's up to you how you want to treat it. Uh, but we're going to move on. We're going to paste the counts into here. And they're a very similar thing, except one little difference. If I click in here, it doesn't need a separate range to count. It just wants to know where the criteria is, so what it's counting. And that's because whether or not you count this column or the column next to it, you're still just counting each row as a one or a zero. So this function just dispensed with that redundancy and you just go ahead and count the dates. For something a little bit different on these ranges, I'll clean them up by just taking the ending row off all the way down to the end of the sheet, I have to take out those dollar signs as well. And this is a technique, if you wanna use it, to make it future-proof, if you will. So if you know that more data is going to be added below, if you just have no ending row number, it will catch all of that. Copy that down by dragging down the lower right-hand corner. Numbers stay the same. But if you added something to the end, let's just do that so these counts this is the third quarter 2021. Let's watch it. It should go up. There it is. It went to two. But these didn't move because those ranges aren't including that. All right, so a little lesson within a lesson there. So we've completed summarizing the data with kind of the just good old-fashioned functions that work the way that you would expect if you've been using spreadsheets for a while. And next we're going to move on to summarizing this with a pivot table. So if you're using the template, it's the next thing below, but I'm actually going to, I'm going to delete this data here and then 
place the pivot table right to the right so it's easier to look at. And we'll do that by going to insert and then choosing pivot table. And at first it wants the data range. So we'll uh, click on that. And it has a few guesses here. We're working on the worksheet called copy of source data. And it's going to guess A1 through D12. Be careful because this guess is wrong. That's not going to work well for us. But we'll take the second one and click OK. And then we want to put this on the existing sheet. And be careful because this doesn't usually pick up where your mouse is currently. But if I click on select data range and I'll just actually select that, click on create, and it makes a blank pivot table for you. So right now I'm going to decrease my screen resolution so you can see this better. Give me one moment. All right, so you have a blank pivot table and in the values we are going to add just the amount. All right, that's what we've been looking at. That's all we want to work with in the middle. And then along the left-hand side, you want to see dates. So those are your rows. Let's add date. And then we're getting there. We have some funky formatting from before. That's why I don't like to change formatting very much. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll select this larger area. I'll go to format and just clear formatting. I should get rid of most of it. And I will paint format this number to that one. All right, so we're almost there already where we have the sum. That's one of the three functions that we want to do. And we have the dates. So let's first add in the other two functions. We want them also just placed in the rows here. So to get that menu back, we'll left click in the pivot table. So the pivot table editor will come back on the right hand side of the screen. And we want to add the average and add the count. So what we want to do is add two more values because the values are what fill the middle portion of the pivot table. So we will add amount again and we will add amount one more time. And then we'll come down and change the summarize by. Okay, so the pivot table is saying, hey, I know you want the amount field, but how do you want to summarize it? Do you want to just add them together? That's what the other two are doing. So we want to change this one to average and we'll change the third one to count. We'll fix the formatting a little bit more. And we're moving right along, but this already, but this looks a little weird at this point, right? Because the sum is same as the average and the counts are all ones. That's because there's only one transaction on each date. So mathematically the sum and the average would be the same if there's only one amount and there's only one count. But what we want to do now, we haven't done yet, is to group this by quarter. So doing this in pivot tables gives us a big advantage that the pivot table actually knows what a quarter is. So when you right click and you choose create pivot date group, there's a function here called quarter and that will put it into four groups. But we're actually going to use year quarter. We'll click on that and I'll show you why because it will do each separate quarter it will give it its own line. So when we go into 2022, that Q1 doesn't get aggregated into 2021. It's its own line and that's uh, how we want this data to look. And it's already arriving at the same totals that we got previously with all that work on the traditional functions. Okay, so the pivot table is easier. It's more flexible and say for example, if you just wanted to add another layer to this, so if we wanted to also look at it by region, you just add that in with a click. So that took a matter of seconds. But if you had to go back to those functions that you used to add another layer, it would make it very complicated and hard to change. So I would say the pivot table is the next iteration of making this analysis easy. Let's delete this. And we'll work on our third example, which is using the query function. All right, I'll zoom back in just a bit. And the query function can be a little bit tricky to type out. And you'll see that this one is kind of large. So uh, I worked it out before. I'm going to paste it into here and we will talk about it. All right, so let's look at the output first. It has the quarter and the year, sorted by the year and then the quarter. So this is sorted the same way. It has the same outputs. And so this is doing exactly what the pivot table did, but it's all being driven by the formula in F4. So an advantage of query is that you can use it like a function. So you can come in here, it's all written down. There's nothing that pops up on the right-hand side. 
and it's very customizable. The downside is that it uses a SQL language. So none of this is familiar if you are just used to the traditional functions or pivot tables. But let's talk about what it's doing. So it's saying the select clause is telling it what to grab and return from the table. And we're going to return column A. We're going to do it twice once we're going to pull the quarter out of it and once we're going to pull the year. The quarter and year are both kind of recognized by SQL. So that's one of the advantages of the query function over standard functions is that it knows what a quarter is. So I did not have to define it for query. Pulled the years out and then I summed, averaged and counted column D. So once you become a little bit familiar with the syntax, it actually is readable. It's more readable than the traditional functions because you can also just say, I grouped it by quarter and then by year and I ordered it by year and then quarter. So all of this you can kind of read once you're familiar with it. You could reconfigure these. There's different mathematical functions. There's different date functions and uh, obviously different ways to order it. If you wanted to, we'll click out of there. You could even label these columns, give them custom labels if you didn't like how these look. And if you enjoyed this video, if you subscribe, you'll see more videos just like this. Thanks for watching. It's nice to have you around.